I am going. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. By your words, I can see where I am going. And this is so encouraging that by the word of God, that's, where you, that's when you get to see exactly. The, the word of God, it's a beam of light. Amidst great darkness in this world, the, it says that the word of God, it, it, it throws a beam of light into the dark paths. And so by the word of God, in the year 2023, we shall see where we are going. Praise be to God. So may you treasure the hearing, the teaching of the word of God. And it's my prayer that the Lord would enlarge our hearts, that we will not only be hearers of his word, but we shall also obey it. Praise be to God. This is my prayer. So I desire as we continue, as people come out of their holidays, I desire that this Bible study, because most people will desire to hear the word of God that they may see where they are going. That was just an emphasis on the word of God. This, this really hit me hard. That hakuna kitu ingine italeta muangaza katika njia yetu. His word is a lamp unto our feet. May you treasure the word of God. Allow me to just uh, to read uh, Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 4, and then we are going to do the exposition there. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in, who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Uh, in the previous chapter, chapter 4, uh, and from chapter 5, we went through uh, the doctrines, you know, and uh, Jesus was arming his disciples uh, against uh, the corrupt doctrines of the Pharisees and the scribes. And so we went through the doctrines, and I think Pastor mentioned that in this church, most of what we do, our doctrines is based on the Matthew chapter 5. And so Jesus was arming his disciples against the corruption of those doctrines, whereby for them, uh, the, the way the Pharisees and the scribes were practicing the law, you know, it was in a, in a way selfish. It, it was in a way hypocrisy. So after Jesus having armed his disciples about the doctrines, now he comes to the practical uh, things that they needed to do. And so you know the doctrine. So after the doctrine, you know what is the truth. You know what exactly you need to do. Now we come to practical examples on the things that we need to do. And of course, in this chapter, Jesus is also warning them against the corrupt uh, practices which were being done out of, you know, the, not out of sincerity, but out, in a way out of hypocrisy. And in this chapter, we'll see there are two sins that Jesus was trying to point out against their practices, that those things they were doing, they are good, and each one of us, we will do them. But he was warning them against the sin of hypocrisy and then the world, the worldliness, the world-mindedness. Yani, kufanya vitu, yes, we are doing uh, things that look like they are Christ-like, but we are doing with the world view. And so this is what basically in this chapter you will find that uh, in the, there is the issue of prayer, there is the issue of uh, fasting, and there is the issue of giving alms, that is, uh, those uh, righteous practices that they were supposed to do. And also now, when it comes to the others, there is also the laying up of treasures in heaven and also the lamp of the body. You cannot serve God in riches and do not worry. So he was also admonishing them against the sin of worldliness. Yani, to do things out of, out of worldly mindedness. Kufanya mambo katika udunia. Yet, you're doing things as a believer. And so even for us as believers, these are sins 
that easily beset us. But unfortunately, because they are hidden, again we say it, uh, Jesus and in the New Testament, it is not more of what we do outside. It is heart matters, heart adultery, heart lying, heart those things that we cannot see. And so we find that for most of us, we may be doing things, but we do it. Hypocrisy is not something you can see. Hypocrisy is not something by what I do, you can actually tell I've done it out of hypocrisy. And so it is for us believers, these are things that we need to watch out. That as we do the righteous acts, as we do what is as believers we are supposed to do, in our prayers, in our giving of alms, in our fasting, the Bible is telling us to be very careful against doing it in hypocrisy, just as like the Pharisees and the scribes were doing. And so Jesus is a good teacher. He brings out the principle and he gives us illustration. And so in chapter 6, verse 1, one of the first things he says, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. What is Jesus talking about here? Jesus is talking about the motive. What is your motive for that which you are doing? And um, the principle here is uh, you take it to yourself. Actually, there's a lot of some other vers versions they're talking about. Do not, do not, you know, take it. Be careful that um, whatever you're doing, as you do your righteous deed, which is the righteous deed here, it is the giving up of arms. This one comes at a timely moment. We've just been from the Christmas season where people want to do to give gifts, where people, you know, there's just a lot of charitable things that people want to do. And maybe it is a good moment to review what we have been doing. As we were doing those charitable things, did you do it in the way and in the manner that pleased the Lord? And so, uh, one of the first things that Jesus highlights, what is the motive? What is your motive for your Christian service? Everything you do for the kingdom of God, it all starts with, what is my motive? Why am I doing this? What, what exactly is driving me? And uh, for this, I would just encourage us as the church that we make sure that the motive for doing what we do in the kingdom of God, it shall not be driven by desire to be recognized or to be noted by men. That is what Jesus Christ would let us know. That any righteous deed that you do, don't do it to be seen of men. The Bible tells us that one day we'll stand before the judgment seat of God and our works will be judged. Kila kitu tulifanya uku. Everything that you did will be judged. But what will matter is what was your motive? Was it about you? Was it about the kingdom of God? And uh, we see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. Just to make that point sink home. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, uh, New King James Version, Their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with the fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. It, if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames. Everything we do for God's kingdom, I use an example, like our deacon is doing ushering. Whatever he's doing, one day as he stands before the throne judgment of God, the question is, what will make it not be burnt up? It's all about the motive. Unfortunately, motive, it's not something I can see in you. Neither can you see it in me. You cannot, today, I'm the one ministering. What is my motive for me? It's not something but God. And that is why, at the end of the day, as we follow Jesus Christ, the issue of our heart is very, very important. So what is your motive for the things you do for the kingdom? When you go for those prayer cashers, what is your motive? Is it a good name? Is it to be noted of men? And Jesus is careful to tell us that when we do those things, we be very, very careful. And 
the question maybe you're asking, then what should be the motive? Whatever I do for the work of God, whatever I do, it is a new year, and I know all of us, we have new resolution. This year I'll do this, I'll do this for the Lord. The question is, what is your motive? So that you can be recognized, so that men can note you. If that is your motive, then that is wrong. Be sure that is some of the work that will be burnt up. And uh, Paul will tell us, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, Paul would tell us that uh, what motivated him was the love of Christ. He says, for the love of Christ constrains me. For me and uh, for each one of us, may our greatest motivator for Christian service only be the love of Christ. And that only remains to be the valid motivator, the love of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, for God's kingdom. It, and in this regard, it is in giving of arms, in helping the needy, doing charitable work, anything that you do for the kingdom of God, may the love of Christ constrain you. Wacha upendo wa Yesu ukuendio unakufanya ufanya hizo vitu zote. Why? Because some people have suffered shipwreck when they are saying they were serving the Lord. Because probably your motive was not right. So at some point, what will hit you is something we call discouragement. And you'll feel people are no longer noting. People did not even note I'm the one who did that. Every other time that when you do something for the kingdom and you find yourself like asking yourself, you know, you, it is time to question your motive. What is your motive? It's a new year and I want to believe we desire to serve God more than we ever served God. But may our motive, the only thing that will outlast whatever we do for the kingdom. It is when we are constrained by the love of Christ. When we do, we should not do things to draw attention for ourselves. There's a brother of mine I love so much who keeps telling us he loves simplicity. He doesn't like complicated. Even if it is a dress you're wearing, it should not be complicated. It should be simple. You know, so whatever you do, is it for yourself or for the kingdom of God? Let us be careful. Those things that at times we do and they draw attention to ourselves. And I think as a church, one of the things we've emphasized, and uh, of course some of you, you're really not helping us. You know, during the holiday, I was able to meet a few people. And uh, some of you have been good ambassadors and even inviting people to this church. But allow me to just say, if you're going to invite people to Trinity, this church is not for Pastor Willie. You know, some of you are very good. When people tell you the challenges they are going through in their churches, and then you tell, Siu kuja kwa Pastor Willie. Apana, siu kwa Pastor Willie. Siu kwa Pastor Jotham. In fact, hata munaungeza Pastor Jotham hapo. Uku ni kwa Pastor Willie. No, 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 no. Allow me. I know this year, as the Lord spoke to us, uh, towards when we were crossing over the Kesha, that this year there will be productivity. Maybe many people will, through your life, they'll be asking, where do you fellowship? When people ask you where you fellowship, please tell them at Trinity House. And his name is Jesus. Praise be to God. At Trinity House, and his name is Jesus. Imambo ya Pastor Willie, Pastor Wanjie, Pastor Karori. This is not someone's church. This is a church of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. I fellowship at Trinity House and his name is Jesus. And then they'll be like, what have you said? Uh, his name is Jesus. Yes. Uh, uh, most of the people get confused. They'll not ask you that time. They'll come another time. At Ulisamuna Fellowship Wapi, Trinity House, his name is Jesus. And they will want to come and find that Jesus. And maybe some of you, the reason some of the people you've invited, because wabu unawambia wakuje kwa pastor wanjie, yet, wako kwa pastor kamau, na pastor karioki, wenye, I'm just using names, where they are not very happy, and then uambia tena wakuje kwa pastor wanjie, watakuja kweli? They will not, but when you tell them, Trinity House, his name is Jesus, because here, only Christ is exalted, isn't it? We are not anything we do as a ministry, it is not for the praise and honor of our name. Our motive is to see Christ glorified, to see Christ exalted, to see Christ 
edified in everywhere you are. And as you say that, Christ will remain to be exalted. And so don't do things to draw attention to yourself. Whatever you do, whether it is in singing, it is in giving, whatever righteous act you're doing. Because I tell you, men may not notice you, but God in heaven does note exactly what we are doing. And so another thing, uh, Jesus says that do not sound a trumpet. Okay, I'm not exactly sure. You know, there are people who scream. And we see it in the social media, every small thing you're doing. And uh, as a church, we try as much as possible not to carry our cameras. And when we do, like now when we are at, at the mission, it is purely for the edification of Jesus Christ. That many people may see what Christ is doing. Not for the name at a Trinity house, one afanya ivi, one ah, 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 ah. All those things, if we do for that motive, ndiozile vitu zita chomeka. So imagine everything that you have done. If your motive was for a good name, if your motive was uh, so that people can praise you, and this, this didn't happen, I can imagine you must be very disappointed. I pray, church, that our motive only be, be you know, be, we are constrained by the love of Christ. It is to see Christ glorified. It is not for the praise of men, because I tell you, the praises of men will fail you. Praise be to God. I remember one time I was sharing with someone, and they shared to me something about uh, this, 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 this brother who had done so much for the kingdom. And then uh, they are doing so many things. They are always there for people. But during their time of need, nobody showed up. And they were so disappointed. So the question is, why were you doing those things? Because if you are doing it for Jesus, Jesus will never fail to show up. Praise be to God. Jesus will never fail to show up. Your church members can fail to show up. Your family members can fail to show up. But Jesus will never fail to show up. So Jesus is admonishing us that whatever we do, let it not be for ourselves. Let it not, let us not shout. Na vile tunapenda kushout. Na vile simu squeezy. I don't know with the digital um, era what we are going to do. But again, we must constrain ourselves that we are not doing anything to draw attention to ourselves. And maybe the question you're asking yourself this morning is, but again, the word of God tells us we are the light of the world. And our light should shine before men. Praise be to God. I know it is a tricky balance. Our light will not fail to shine. Because as long as it is Christ in us, his light will continue to shine. But it will not be shining because it is about us. It will be about him. His name is Jesus, our Lord, and our Savior. Another, another thing that Jesus I uh, want us to note here, he says, but when you do a charitable deed, uh, do not let your la uh, left hand know what right hand is doing. What does this mean to us? That whatever you do for God's kingdom, don't make a big deal about it. Just do it and move on. Praise be to God. And I know people who do that. They do great things for the kingdom, but they just do it and pass on. May, we be, may it be us that in this year, whatever we do, we shall not be making a big deal out of it. We shall just be doing it for the glory and the praise of God. So whatever you do with your right hand, your left hand should not know. Don't go boasting. Don't go shouting. Apana, when you do that, then you have failed that test of not, uh, not seeking your own glory, but seeking that Christ may be glorified. And also he says, um, and your father who sees in secret, he himself will reward you openly. In Christian service, there are rewards. But these rewards are not the earthly rewards. They are the heavenly rewards. And each one of us, we know that at the end of the day, the word of God tells us they are crowns. Every, they are crown of righteousness. They are crowns, you know, everything we do, there is a reward. Not the earthly one. The earthly one is the one for men praise you and tell you, hey, vile umefanya. And for you as a human being, you take it in. I pray this year, people will lie low. You know, you'll do great things for the kingdom. But you'll be careful not to receive the reward of men. When men praise you for the things you have done, you have received your reward. I pray each one of us will desire the heavenly rewards that when we get to heaven and our work, 
ipitishwe katika moto na yote ipite jofri kuimba yote tuliimba ipite Is, ya friday isichomeke hapo na ingine ya sunday ichomeke zote zipite maombi tuliomba mungai tukaomba zote zipite na sisi hakuna yenye itabaki hapo bwana yesu asifiwe and the bible tells us there is a reward actually some people take it a bit further they say mimi nilikuwa tu nafanya staki any reward that is unscriptural according to the scriptures there are rewards for christian service praise be to god but sio za wanadamu the bible says that god who sees in secret he's the one who will reward us openly and so one of the things maybe i'll just want to mention that uh, salvation is not a reward praise be to god the gift of salvation it is a gift eternal life is a gift you cannot earn eternal life that one was given unto you so the fact that you have believed in jesus christ that is a gift but there are other rewards that we are going to receive when we serve god faithfully and in the way and in the manner he wanted us to to serve him so i pray to each one of us even though sometimes as human beings you'll do things and if you ever find yourself saying nilifanya hivi hakuna mtu ali notice and then you start counting i did this i did that nobody noticed hapo umeanguka mtihani ninaomba hii mwaka tupite hiyo mtihani ya kwamba whatever we do for for the glory of god we are not doing it to please men but we are doing it do good and please god and he who sees in secret will be able to reward you and again there is also uh, one thing uh, you cannot fail, i cannot fail to mention is that uh, there is always a right way and a wrong way of doing anything in this life and so when it comes to giving of arms when it comes even our giving of offerings and all that you know we should do it in a, in a way and in a manner that we are not looking for the earthly rewards but we are giving it for the glory of god and so in our giving whether it is arms giving whether it is in offerings the support of god's work the bible admonish, admonishes us that we do it with simplicity we do it out of a cheerful heart and we be motivated by your love for the lord and not your desire to be seen of men na vile tunataka kuonekana na watu vile tunataka tutajwe eh na the one who did this ni mimi nilifanya hivi hii ni mtihani mkubwa sana and i'm thankful to god that we are sharing this on the second sunday of this year so that as we begin the year 2023 as you devote to the work of the kingdom from the word go default setting have been set right my motive it is for the glory of god and so when it comes to giving uh, allow me to just mention uh, that um, when we it comes to giving i loved another version that was says we give it hilariously i look forward to one day here at trinity house wakati ni when it is offering time i'll see people waking up laughing waving their effort you know hilarious yani tumefurahi kutoa kwa mungu so whether it is in those arms giving have you ever found yourself maybe kuna vitu zina people are giving out things uh, to help other people and maybe you've been doing it for some time especially when you tuko kwa vikundi sometimes tunaambwa tutoe tutoe if you ever get to a point and now you start complaining tumetoa sana what i would ask you usitoe praise be to god hizo zitapotea haya let me even bring the point home have you been ever in a service whereby Uh, maybe the person ministering says i hear the lord saying there are 10 people here who want to give 100000 praise be to god ushaisikia hiyo maneno hamjaisikia na jo mmesikia and so the 10 people wanaanza kuamka kamau jen na wanakuja hapa na tunaona wanatoa 1100 so what goes back at the back of your mind hey umejitolea that is the reward of men I pray the servants of God who will be we whom God will give us they will not allow us to error. Kwa sababu hiyo 1000 100000 umetoa reward yako imepita tu hivyo. Hizo ndio zile vitu zitachomeka. I pray to each one of us whatever you give with your right hand the left hand should not know. And also we that is why as a, as a, as a church we are very careful tusiwaingize kwa makosa tusifanye mkose rewards zenu in heaven 
Kwa nini? Kwa sababu tulifanya watu wawapigie makofi. Eh? You come, you donate something for the church and we tell you, ah, uh, mnaona hii keyboard? Ah, uh, brother Kamau ni amepeana. Tumpigie makofi, there is your reward. Praise be to God. Do we want earthly rewards? We want heavenly ones, isn't it? And God will help us. So, whatever we give, we give according to what we have purposed, not grudgingly, not out of necessity, not we give it cheerfully. Kulingana na vile una unapenda. And when it comes to arms giving, allow me to read 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 9. In message translation, I loved it. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, uh, 6 and 7. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each one of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. Sob stories ni kama stories ahuzuni and I'm twisting. Whereby you give what you had not planned to do. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. So whatever you're giving, first, don't give it to show men. Don't give it so that you may get a good name. The word of God is telling us you actually take plenty of time to think over it. Nasai, because I know you came to the house of God and you have an offering, I want to give you some, think over what you want to give. Take some good time. See, ile, unaingiza mkono, kama saya watoto. Parents have this habit of wanatafuta coins, uh, nataka offering. Immediately, ni coins. Watoto wanapewangwa coins. The Bible says, think about it carefully. Ufikirie, ufanya hesabu zako, alafu ndio utoe. Na usituane ju umeambua utoe. Don't be give out of kushurutishwa. Apana, you do it out of delight. I'm giving it unto the Lord. And I pray, the Bible says, a stingy planter will get a stingy crop. So if you're stingy in your giving, you also harvest stingily. If, you, if you're the, the kind of a person, you plant abundantly, that is the same thing. That is a principle. It is in the, the principle of the word of God, and it will never change. So, but the issue is, see, is it V2? Sometimes I see uh, on social media, kuna kuja mtu, akona shida. And because of you know, we are human beings. We have emotions. Without even thinking, unatoa pesa. Recently, there's a story that has been going on of a lady. Akachukua kijana flani. Akasema ako in need. Watu wakachanga. Juzi alikuwa TikTok. Akisema ni mwaka mpia. Staki kuanza mwaka na uongo. Iyo pesa ilikuwa. Hey, my friend. No, you know why? Because when it comes to giving, the Bible is saying, carefully think. Yeah, he nataka kusaidia. Ningapi nataka kusaidia. And this will never change. And with, with that, the Bible says we'll avoid sob stories, sad stories. Yeah, I remember even another time. It's of vitu by the way, they are very common. In fact, nowadays, I think the way of conning has changed. It is on social. People bring a very sad story. Natuna changa, natuna changa. Three months down the line, the story that will be unearthed, unasikia watu anasema, to reverse way mpesa yetu. Why? Because in your giving, you did not carefully think about it. And so, whatever we do for the kingdom of God, the righteous acts of giving, whether it is arms, whether it is offering, whatever it is, it is not to be seen by men, it is not for the praise of men, it is for the glory of God. And when we do it, we do it willingly, we willingly and not even gradually, without saying, tumetua sana, Anytime ukifika mahali, usitoe, watana tunayo. You'll miss your reward. And every other time, someone will force you to give. And you had not purpose to give. Watana na iyo. Bwana isu asifiwe. Siju kama nyinyi mmechoka. Kupanda na hamvuni. Are you tired of sewing where you're not reaping? Yeah, mmechoka. So that is it. So the, 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 the platform has been set. Kaa chini, fikiria na wamue. Think through it. Think through it. So... That is about uh, one of the righteous uh, deeds that you're supposed to do, the giving up of arms. And uh, I, think, I think that one, I've covered it adequately. And now we go to the next one, 
uh, that is the issue of prayer. These are some of the righteous acts. And anivizuri sayi ni January, watu wako katika maombi, wako katika kufunga. And because this year we want to reap, as we, uh, we want to, to, to reap uh, where we have harvested, I pray that God would help us to do it in a way and in a manner that pleases him. So allow me to read from verse 5. I'm going to read up to verse 9. And it says, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do. For they may think, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And in this manner, therefore pray. Allow me to just handle that uh, first part of that. And uh, as we read this, I want us to just have an understanding about prayers and the Jews. For Jews, prayer was a very important uh, discipline in their lives. And um, for them, they used to have two types of prayers. One of them, it was called Shema. Shema was a prayer they would say twice a day, early in the morning and late in the night. And they would do it early in the morning before 9 a.m. Kabla 9 a.m. wifike, wanasema yo maombi. Na before 9 p.m., wanasema yo maombi. So it will be done, the first thing they do in the morning and the last thing they will do. So they were very committed. They were very religious in doing this. And uh, for Shima, uh, it's actually, uh, it constituted of three sections of the Old Test the Testament. And uh, from there, Deuteronomy chapter 6, whereby they would say, the Lord our God is one Lord, and they shall love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul. So these things they had memorized. So imaombi wangesema asubui, alafu waseme jioni. So it's something they had gotten used to. Uh, allow me to say this with a lot of humility. Um, I studied in a Catholic school. And so obviously, you know, there's the Rosary, the Hail Marys, the Our Father. So I remember every other time to look at Tunaenda Maombi and we would start, Our Father who art in heaven, oh hell, and we would recite those things. But I can tell you, I don't think, I even put to mind, what am I saying? What does these things do? It was just another liturgy. And so for these Jews, they had those things, they were written. And so they would repeat the same prayer again and again. Every day at 9 a.m., before 9 a.m., and after, uh, and bef bef after, before 9 a.m. and before 9 p.m., wange recite hizo maombi. Then, they also had another set of prayers. They used to call it Shiminov. I, um, you'll forgive me if I don't pronounce it the way it should, but it used to be called Shiminov. That one, there were 18 separate prayers. Maombi, one, eight, 18. Uh -huh. 18 prayers, wangesema. Na for those who are from the Catholic backgrounds, simnajo is rosaries, kuna ile maombi to sacred heart, all those things. We have done them. Me personally, I did them very religiously. But nice was if you were. And uh, so they had 18 prayers. At some point they added, they were 19. But they would still be able to recite. Na sasa hizo, even their children, they grew up. And we know, even right now, some religions, they have those prayers. And they used to be so religious, just like some of the religions in our Kenya, whereby, ikifika masaflani, mahali tu yuko, ana kneel down, na naomba. Simnajua hizo, sita shinda nikisema. That's how they used to do it. They were so, in fact, some of those prayers, they had to take a ritual bath. Like we, we were told sometimes back, like for the Jews, mentioning the name Yahweh, you know, they could not even bring themselves. The, re the reverence and the honor for, they had for the name of God. And so, when they were preparing, they would take a quick bath. They used to do those rituals. They do it with a lot of discipline. 
and we know even in Kenya, there are those people who are very much disciplined in that. And so these things, they were doing them out of religious duty. And this is why Jesus would come now and tell them that is not the way to pray. Because Jesus is starting and tell when, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Because what were they doing? One, they were doing those prayers. They, when it was time to pray, remember, these are not prayers that you're going to read in a book. It is prayers you have memorized. So when it was prayers time, and ilikuwa inafika wakati wa maombi, they would rush. Some of these people, they would rush somewhere. Mahali watu wanaizaona. And so they recite, they recite. And so what would happen? People would be so impressed. They would look at them and think this person is so spiritual. And this is what now Jesus is coming to tell us. That when it comes to prayer, we cannot do it like they used to do. Because first, they were doing it to draw attention to themselves. Ndiyo mana, wale watu wataona wakua nasema, he, na grace, anakuanga religious sana. Ebu ona vile, anaomba hizo maombi. You know, those are the things they were looking out for. Then also Jesus tells them that um, uh, they, they have their reward. I mentioned earlier and I said, in our Christian service, whatever duties we embark in serving the Lord, we have rewards. So for them, they already have their rewards. Why? Men would praise them. Men would acknowledge vile wanaomba and you know the way they are doing it. So they already have their reward. Then Jesus says, when you pray, go into your inner room and shut your door. And I've had some people make a joke out of this, this scripture. And then they are saying, if you stay in a single room, where is your inner room? Where will you pray? Praise be to God. Not at he, literally, you know, what Jesus is saying, and a wombe kwa siri, bwana isu asifiwe. You know, I've had people challenge and say, me, I can't pray. I have no inner room. I stay in one room. Where is my inner room? And Jesus said, you know, those people who just want to corrupt. So Jesus is saying, when you do it, you do it in secret. Niyako, it is a communication between you and God. Oh, unto us who love shouting when praying. Praise be to God. Mungu atatusaidia. But at times, it is not intentional. We don't do it. Do I have eh, members of intercessory? Those who pray loudly like me? No, in actual sense, it is not because we, it's a motive. You're doing it, people can see. At times, maybe unaingia kwa maombi, and uh, eh, before you know it, umezama and your voices raises. That one, your motive was not to, uh, to get that attention. It just happened in that moment. And so, uh, Jesus is telling us, don't involve yourself in those meaningless, you know, things you're just doing for the sake of it. Go to a private place, pray, and God will hear. He also tells them to avoid the vain repetitions. So, you see, they were repeating the same kind of prayer. For me, prayer, it is a relationship. For me, prayer, it is communicating. You know, it is like the way I would speak to a friend, and I'm talking to God, my Father, and I'm telling you, Father, I've come to worship you, I've come to praise you, I love you, you know, those kind of things. And so, for these people, they would use vain repetitions. And when I was preparing this, I remembered sometimes back when I was conned in the city of Nairobi. Unajo, if you are a believer, you won't be conned the worldly way. Utakonua tu kibeliva, bwanaiso asifiwe. So I remember one time I'm walking in the street of Nairobi and a lady approaches me and asks me for direction. And then, nikamwambia uh, misi jui. But because I'm those kind of people who love answers. Siju kama uko na iyo, utakangi kuwata watu hanging. You want to leave people at a place of solution. So, I don't know. So they asked me for direction. Nikamwambia sijui. So akaniambia, you know those people. So we asked that other person. So the other person said, eh, mi naju, najua. Mimi vile niliingia kwa yo, story tuende tukatafute, yo place inajulikana, I don't know. But tukaenda, tukaenda, we got some place in town. Then they asked me, they, uh, they started asking me those stories. I'm telling you this because some of you, you've gone through this, and I want to help somebody. So they started telling me, si kwenye ukuna ishida, munajua ni nani anawaroga, and of course, as a young believer, you believe unarogwa sana. Bona iso asifiwe, especially when things are not going your way. You always believe kunamurogi kwenu. Sini ukweli. That is when you are a young believer. Right now, I don't think that I'll be quick to think that. 
So they started asking me, and then at some point, they told me, God wants to give you answers to your problems. So they told me, wanataka uh, niombe maombi flani. So they told me to pray our father a hundred times. Our father who art in heaven. I don't know how long it will take. But, but they asked me, but when you're going before God, so they asked me, how much do you have in your purse? It will see the confusion of Satan. So, I had 1,000 note and some coins. So they told me to put your 1,000. Hawaku anataka coins. You know, like, they tell you don't go before God na pesa. They take the big amount. Ile kidogo wanakuatia. And so I proceeded at a certain corner. Nikanza our father. By the time I think I was on, <laughs> on my 10th time. Ay, I'm like, what has happened? What am I even doing here? You know, the vain repetitions. And uh, yeah. That is the way I was conned in the city of Nairobi. Praise be to God. Anybody who is telling you, did you recite, did you what? And uh, that is not, there are also other, I remember sometimes back, there's a popular person who guides people in prayers. And I remember, tulisumbwana uh, sana na my husband. Kwa sababu I wanted him to give me, uh, how much, how many dollars? How many because it was coming to around 12,000 shillings, you buy the, the prayer materials. They tell you, these prayers, these are time you need to pray them. They are, they are specific. Zile za moto, si mnazijua. Nanajua labda wengine wenyu mkonazo. Praise be to God. Maybe some of you even do have these prayers. And so I came, I told him, the way when I pray using these points, nasikia breakthrough kabisa. So I wanted him to give me money. But thank God to my husband, because... Mungu alimuokoa kitambo, those things. And like, what is that? Eh, you want a prayer book eh, to be praying with? And then he refused to give me money. And of course, I'm those wives who don't steal from their husband. Praise be to God. Eh, hakuna secret account. Hallelujah. So, ikaishia tu hapo. And later, only to come and realize, it is a very big trap. Whereby, your prayers are guided in a certain way. Someone tells you, Pray these prayers. 21. In fact, zinakwanga bullets. I want to help you. Usinge kwa imitego. When it comes to prayer, Jesus is telling us, avoid the vain repetitions. The only thing I always repeat in my prayers is the word of God. I can declare the word of God again and again. That is not a vain repetition. Because every time you declare the word of God, you know you're releasing faith. But isi maneno zingine ati... Every, oh, oh, I can't even remember. Those things we have prayed, but we have repented. Hallelujah. Na wewe kama uko kayapo, repent. Because Jesus is telling us that he's given us the Holy Spirit to help us pray. You don't need prayer bullets to go to the Father. You need to just go before him and pray to him and tell him. So Jesus was telling them, don't use vain repetitions. When you repeat things and you know you're just repeating out of memory. Our Father who art in heaven, there's that prayer we used to pray when you're going to sleep. I sleep, do it to God, and if I die, you know that prayer? I know you have prayed it. Even me, I've prayed it many times. If I close to sleep, I don't know. You know that prayer? Those ones. You know, you're just doing it out of memory. And even in our Sunday school, we try to train our children. Siu kusema, tukiwambia, tuseme our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hello, no, 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 no. It is a communication. When you do it out of memory, it has no value to you. And so Jesus will tell them, don't use vain repetition. And also don't think you'll be hard for your many words. Many times we have said in this church, it is not about quantity, it is about quality. And this is why I would desire each one of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because at times, happened yo tunasaidikanga sana. But ala akushinda uki repeat the same things. You allow the Holy Spirit to do it for you. Praise be to God. And you pray in the Spirit. And also it says, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. So, God already knows what you are in need of. You don't have, sometimes we pray like we are giving God information. See your information, 
God does not need information. After all, he knows everything about us. And that is why for me, the greatest part of your prayer should be worship. Just worshiping him. Telling him that he's able. At a comma before you, it is a mountain. Telling him that he's able and he can do it. And so Jesus is telling them, stop doing it out of a religious duty. Tunafa kuomba, so I pray. No, 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 no. Do it out of a relationship. And uh, because of time, I don't think I'll be able to go through the, the model of prayer that Jesus Christ, there's so much there. And, uh, but allow me to, pray, to, uh, to, just lay, to just summarize by saying, then, if you're not supposed to pray like this, which is this prayer that pleases God? How are we supposed to pray? I wouldn't want to just tell you, don't use vain repetitions, don't talk too much, you know, all those things. Don't pray to draw attention to yourself. Which is this prayer that God desires of us? The prayer that pleases God is a prayer of faith. It is not the many words. It is not, you know, the position. You can be kneeling down, you can be lying down, but still you don't have faith. The prayer that pleases God is the prayer of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So those who come to God in prayer, you must believe. If you're going to, the prayer that will please God is the prayer of faith. And also Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received and it will be yours. This year, as, um, as we were told, most of the, what God, God has in store for us, it will be birthed in prayer. Let our prayers be prayers of faith. When you go before God, do it out of faith, not out of religious duty. Not out of wanting to repeat and to be seen of men. James 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, the effectual. So, it doesn't have to be long. But when you have faith, the Bible says, If your faith is as little as a master's seed, you can be able to move mountains. So, I pray this year, as you engage God in prayer, let's do the prayer of faith. And uh, when you do that, because if you, when you go through the Lord's Prayer, you see that prayer, the model God Jesus Christ gave us, there is worship, we pray for deliverance, we pray for guidance, we pray for provision. So in all those things, uh, I wanted to just highlight, uh, many of the times we go through trials, many of the times we go through temptations, and at that point, our prayers take a different approach. I just want us to learn from Jesus Christ. We covered that some times back. Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus Christ uh, was faced, uh, when he met Satan, came to tempt him. There's one way Jesus was able to counter the, the attacks of the enemy. And it is using the word of God. Church, wacha tujifundishe katika maumbi yetu kukua tuna. I'm not saying, I'm not giving a formula. But at times, it is good when you go before God to just tell him, it is written. I shall not die, but I shall live. It is written, by your stripes I am healed. When you use the word of God, then you will not enter into error of vain repetitions. You will not enter into an error of just saying things for the sake of it. But the word of God, it's powerful. And when you speak it, it releases faith. I pray this year... You will take time to study the word of God and using the word of God, use it for your prayers. Because the moment the Bible says that word when it goes back to God and you tell him, Lord, it is you who has said, God is faithful to accomplish that. And uh, because today I've touched on prayer and I've touched on righteous acts. Uh, in conclusion, whatever we do as 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse that one, whether it is giving alms, whether it is prayer, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. May our motive, may our motive be driven by the love of Christ and let it be for the glory of God. Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, let it be for his glory. And uh, 
tumetoka tu sikuku. So let me just ask you. So whatever you ate and drink, was it for the glory of God? The eating, the drinking, was it for the glory of God? The Bible says, whatever you eat, you drink, or whatever else you do, you do it for the glory of God. So this year, whatever service you're going to offer unto God, let it be for his glory. And let your motive be constrained by the love of Christ. Anything else, it will not pass the test of time. And again, in Psalms 115, verse 1, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Whatever you do for God's kingdom, when like now people are praying and fasting, you decide to take 40 days for the church, not unto yourself, not unto man, but for the glory of his name. And that way we'll be assured of our heavenly reward. And uh, we'll not, we may miss out on the earthly rewards and it is okay. Those ones, in fact, they are not good for us. We want the heavenly reward. So may God help us as we continue to allow his word to guide our paths. So this year, whatever you do for the kingdom of God, let your motive not to be seen of men, not to be praised of men. And even if this morning you have been complaining and grumbling, I've done this, I've done that, people don't see that, it is not for men to see. There's one who sees in secret. Right now, I don't know, maybe there are some of us who woke up at 3 a.m. to pray for this service. We may never know, but our Father in heaven knows it, and at his own time, he's going to reward you. So I will just want us to just bow down and just respond to the word of God as you have heard it and uh, let it shine bright in your every path. Yesu nipungue wewe uongezeke Yesu nipungue wewe Ongezeke Yesu nipungue wewe uongezeke Yesu nipungue wewe uonge Father in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray, even as we embark on our Christian service here on earth, as you have commanded us and as you have commissioned us, we pray that, Lord Jesus, we shall be constrained by your love. This morning, Father, even as we set ourselves to serve you in the year 2023, search our hearts again. Search us, O oh Lord, and let the only motive and motivator in us be for your glory. Whatever we do for your kingdom, Lord, help us not to seek the earthly rewards, the praises of men. But Father, you who sees in secret, we know you shall reward us openly. Lord Jesus, we thank you May you help us to escape these religious traps of serving you with hypocrisy and with a world-mindedness. Help us, Jesus. You're the one who began a good work in us. We know you're faithful. You carry us to the very end. We decrease that you may increase. Father, we pray that whatever happens in Trinity House, let it not be for the praise of any man, let it be for the glory and honor of your name. Father, even as we anticipate a great year ahead of us, not unto us, not unto us, O God, but for the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give a mighty clap to Jesus.